Okay, so let's talk about aortic problems now. So the two main problems we talk about with aortic problems, or aorta problems, I should say, are aneurysms and dissections. So starting first with, you know, let's talk about what's the big deal. Why do we need to sit here and talk about this tonight? So you might hear, think of aneurysm, you might think of the brain, which is another place you can get an aneurysm. But an aneurysm is effectively in a blood vessel, it's a permanent dilation. So think of it kind of like an inflatable balloon that can pop at any time. Um, and so um, obviously that's gonna be a big deal. Um, you know, it seems fine while it's just, you know, inflating, you know, we're just sitting there dilated. But once it pops, it's gonna be a big problem because what is your aorta? Your aorta is a big deal because it supplies blood um, for the rest of the body. The aorta, you know, it branches off from the heart and it goes, it's, it um, has branches that go up, that go off up and, you know, supply the brain. And then it goes down to supply blood to the rest of your body, your kidneys, your vital organs in your abdomen, um, and of course your legs as well. And so, um, you know, aneurysms, you know, uh, they can be harmless, but they also can lead to rupture. And they can happen in any area of your aorta. They can happen on the aortic arch. They can happen in the thoracic area of your aorta or your abdominal aorta. So that's where you kind of see like when you hear like the AAA, the abdominal aortic aneurysm. Um, you know, things like that, like that's where it's talking about. It's saying specifically, where is the aneurysm happening? And the symptoms that a patient has if they um, have an aneurysm are gonna correspond with whatever area. They may have no symptoms or they may like, you know, if it's up in their chest, like a thoracic um, aneurysm, they may have chest pain. If it's in their abdominal area, they may have abdominal pain or back pain. So it's just gonna kind of depend on where that aneurysm is located. So, um, you know, when an aneurysm ruptures, what happens? Um, so <clears throat> think of like what happens when that balloon pops. So, of course, if this is a major blood vessel, remember this is an artery um, and arteries have that high pressure system. When it pops, they are going to bleed and they can bleed to death in a short period of time if um, not taken care of. So, um, when the balloon pops, there's bleeding. They can have what's called the Gray Turner sign. You learned about you learned about it, um, you know, an adult when you talked about pancreatitis. That it's a sign of internal bleeding. So um, there's um, the Cullen sign, which is you know around the um, umbilical area, which kind of is a bruising. And then if a Gray Turner sign, I always think turn, um, and that your flank area can actually start to like have a bruising, um, and that's a sign of internal bleeding. Um, they usually complain of severe back pain. They are starting to show signs of shock, the low blood pressure, high heart rate, decreased urine output, because remember, the aorta supplies blood flow to the kidneys. So um, that's going to be one of the first things that's going to start slowing down or not working. And then, of course, ultra level of consciousness, they're losing blood, so they're losing oxygen. And the brain is going to be the first thing to go on strike, because it's going to say, hey, I'm not getting the flow that I need to think properly. And if it ruptures, they're going to need an emergent repair. So the overall treatment and role of the nurse, and I mean, look at this bugger, like look how big these things can get. They can get pretty scary. Um, <clears throat> effectively um, with these, my goal of course is to prevent rupture, to make sure the patient has adequate tissue and organ perfusion and to manage their symptoms if they're present. I'm not surgical, so if it's, if it's not too large or causing a problem or too serious, depending on the location and a lot of other factors, I'm gonna just try to manage it so it doesn't get worse. And so I can manage it like I do any other cardiovascular problem where I want to try to modify risk factors. So what messes with my blood vessels? Well, you know, being overweight messes with my blood vessels, high sodium diet messes with my blood vessels, smoking messes with my blood vessels. So all of those things I can modify. I also want to manage their high, um, their, if they have high blood pressure or whatever their blood pressure is, I want to make sure that we are not having too much pressure. Cause if those, um, the, you know, think of it like any balloon, if there's too much pressure, that's going to be more likely it's going to pop. So I need to make sure that there's good adequate blood flow. So I need to manage their hypertension, their hyperlipidemia. So like statin medications, things like that. Um, and, um, you know, the, you know, they might receive beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, because they also don't want their heart beating too fast. Um, so the beta blockers will be used to decrease the heart rate as well as the blood pressure. So that again, there's just not too much pressure, too much stress on this big um, artery that is, uh, what do you call it? Um, you know, pretty much like a ticking time bomb, you know, <laughs> waiting for it to, waiting to blow. I want to decrease all their risk factors if possible. 
Um, if someone's at high risk, we will do surgery um, to try to repair that. Uh, and we're gonna do frequent neurovascular assessments, um, of course, to check, because remember where this is going. So if I have an aneurysm and there's maybe decreased blood flow or an issue, or I have um, a rupture, you know, um, in my um, abdominal aortic aneurysm, where am I going to see a problem? I'm going to see a problem in my kidneys if it's high up enough. And then I'm going to have perfusion to my legs or my feet. So I'm going to need to do a good distal pulse assessment. Um, if I'm having an issue where it's up a little bit higher, I could have issue with blood flow to my, uh, my arms. So I need to do good radial pulse assessment. It's just going to depend on the location, but as a whole, checking my pulses, looking for signs of perfusion, not only to my organs, like my kidneys, my brain, you know, level of consciousness, urine output, but also um, checking pulses in all of my extremities is going to be very important. Um, and then, like I mentioned, monitoring kidney function and urine output is going to be important. I'm going to monitor my labs, and I'm also going to monitor that output that the patient's having. So let's talk about the other type of aorta problem, which is aortic dissection. And what's the big deal here? Um, aortic dissection is a tear in the inner lining of the um, aorta. And again, remember the big deal with aorta is this is the blood supplied to the whole body. So pockets seem like a cool thing, you know, this is, so I should say like this creates a pocket or false lumen um, in the inside of the blood vessel. So what's the big deal? Cause you know, I don't know if you're like me but I always get so excited when I'm trying on clothes and I find out that they have pockets like when I didn't expect them to have pockets. Like if I found like a dress and I was like, oh my goodness I didn't know this dress was gonna have pockets. It's so exciting, right? Well, this is the time where finding pockets or having pockets pockets is not such a cool thing to have because these pockets, what happens is it's a false lumen. In other words, blood fills up in these pockets. And if this blood is in the pockets, maybe it doesn't seem like a big deal, but that blood that's in the pockets is not going out to the rest of the body. So at the end of the day, they literally are losing blood into these pockets of space. And then these pockets start expanding. And eventually these pockets can lead if there's so much pressure because they're filling up with blood instead of blood going to your organs, it's going into these pockets. Um, you know, it can lead to tearing of the outside wall and again, like a rupture. So with patients that have aortic dissections, they usually complain of abrupt pain. And that's what makes it different than um, a lot of the other conditions we've talked about. So it's an abrupt pain. It can be in their legs, their abdomen, or their back. Usually patients describe this as being sharp. They even sometimes describe it as like a tearing or a ripping sensation or a ripping pain. Um, they're going to have signs of hypotension because again, their blood, they have blood in their body, but it's forming in these pockets. It's not going where it needs to go. They can have the same kind of signs of poor perfusion, like neurological deficits or syncope because blood is not going where it's supposed to go. They're literally, and you can kind of see it here, you know, like they literally start forming all these pockets of blood. And so blood is filling the pockets instead of actually going to the organs that need that beautiful perfusion. So what is my role as a nurse? How am I going to treat this? You know, I get patients, um, you know, that have um, dissecting um, aneurysms, or, uh, dissecting, uh, sorry, um, dissecting aortas. There's two different things. I don't want y'all to get those confused because a lot of people do aneurysm. It's, you know, pretty much like a balloon that's inflating about the boats, the whole, it's like the, um, it's a dilation of the artery, whereas a dissection is like a false lumen. You can kind of see it here in this picture where blood just starts kind of going into pockets. Um, and so you don't have good cardiac output, but anyway, so, um, when I get these patients that are having these dissections, I um, you know, my main role as the nurse is to manage their blood pressure. So they usually come up to me on an IV beta blocker, IV calcium channel blocker. And my goal is to keep their blood pressure low. And like it says here, you know, um, per your book, we want to keep the systolic blood pressure hundred to 110. So you see, that's like lower than what we want to keep most people. And then we also want to keep their heart rate 60 or less. Cause again, we don't want any stress. Remember what we talked about with the rupture with the um, aneurysm, it's the same thing here. I do not want, um, what do you call it, um, any sort of rupture of that outside lining, you know, again, because that could be my entire aorta, like that patient's going to, could bleed out in a few, a few minutes um, if that blows. And so I need to manage their blood pressure very, very closely. So they're going to be on IV medication to manage their blood pressure, to manage their heart rate as well. Um, I don't want them being into, again, this is really bad, sharp pain. If they're hurting, what's going to happen? Their body's going to react to that pain. So I need to treat their pain as well. Um, they're going to need um, surgical therapy, um, usually to manage this. Sometimes they can be managed conservatively, but most of the time they end up getting surgical therapy. Um, they place grafts and stuff like that, like you can see, and they kind of, um, you know, um, patch up the lumens in any place where there was an issue. Um, and uh, my overall goals for this patient, of course, is going to be perfusion, cardiac output, you know, making sure that they're getting the perfusion to their organs and tissues, um, symptom management, managing their pain. 
Um, and then education, most of these patients are going to need, um, or all these patients are going to need lifelong antihypertensive therapy. And then you need to know what's going to happen or what are the signs and symptoms that it's coming back or that that graft isn't working or if something, especially um, if, when they have surgery, you know, like making sure they know what does it look like when this stops working. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much aortic problems. So, um, you know, if you're sitting here now panicked and worried about what's going on in your aorta, I'm sure it's fine. Um, but it's always good to know kind of what these, uh, different cardiac disorders look like. All right. Hope this helped. See you later.